A few months ago, I was invited to play in the Media Wars 2 game, where diplomacy content creators face off. That was at exactly the same time that I was developing a threat assessment tool for the game. The tool puts a measurable or an empirical value on both tactics and diplomacy for each power in the game, or for each of my opponents. This was the perfect chance to put it to use. Today, you can see the tool and how it works when I apply it to a game. This is Legendary Tactics. This is a sneak peek at all the values I assigned and the notes I took to accompany them. I'll be breaking down all of these and doing a thorough season by season breakdown of this game. My goal with this game was to see if I could accurately predict when stabs were coming. All of the thoughts you will hear were taken before each turn advanced, so I didn't have the benefit of foresight. But first, I better show you the threat assessment tool. I modeled this after the DEFCON system used by the US Armed Forces to measure a state of alertness. DEFCON 5 represents the least severe threat, and DEFCON 1 is the most dangerous state. For each tier, I've assigned attributes that you might notice in the other player's press, in their tactics, or in their behaviors. I've broken it down into measuring the press that you receive, the tactics or the orders that you observe each season, and then also how you would react to that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please be sure to stab that sub button now because I've got a slew of other ideas, videos, and content planned for this game, and I'd love to share it with you. Let's take a look at the scoring here. All right, so what you do with this tool is you score each opponent one to five for how they're communicating in the press and what their orders tell you. If the scores are radically different one from the other, then they're likely lying to you. If either score is in the red or the white zones, that's DEFCON 1 or 2, then they're likely not your friend. No, they aren't your friend. If both scores are in the 4 or 5s, then they're likely your ally and you can probably trust them. I emphasize words like probably because there's no certainties in diplomacy. Be aware that some players will definitely skew the press score by overtly lying to you. So you, you may be victimized by someone who just says, yeah, I'm with you for sure, don't worry. I'm but I mean, there's other cues you can use in order to detect issues like that. So it's not entirely a bust. Bear in mind who you're working with and that players can present both direct and indirect threats to you. And by indirect threats, I mean, sometimes they can work through another player in order to destabilize you or to harm you. And it doesn't appear as if it's them. So you have to be aware of what can be going on behind the scenes as well. So sometimes you'll get press from other players that will inform you. Press rankings will be subjective. Tactical rankings should be absolutely objective. And you'll also want to consider allying with the player who has the highest score and you'll want to defend against the player with the lowest score. So if we look at the readiness, uh, we've got DEFCONs 1 through 5. In terms of press, a DEFCON 1 means that somebody is lying to you, you've caught them in the lie, someone is making threats, someone is using hostile diction, they're ignoring direct questions from you, or they're misrepresenting the situation, and you can see right through it. If you're looking for more of a DEFCON 2 here, that's sometimes they'll just avoid replying to your messages, or their messages might be brief, possibly evasive, and they'll also avoid any kind of commitment that you ask for. They'll also make worthless promises or promises that don't really do anything for you. Next, we've got DEFCON 3. And this is replying to you by avoiding your questions. This is hedging. This is not committing. Uh, this is delaying responses. If there's some equivocating going on, this likely means they're on the fence and they're thinking about stabbing you. Uh, they're not entirely sure if they're ready to do that yet because they're probably sussing out information from your opponents. DEFCON 4, this is when they're asking for DMZs, that's demilitarized zones. They're really not offering much information, but there's some friendly banter and possibly some offers of help here. This is when they're, they're sussing out whether you will be a good ally or not, and often this can lead to collaborative uh, work together. DEFCON 5, and this is directly asking for an alliance, this is offering support, this is speaking openly, there's no couched language. Often there is also uh, off-topic chat accompanying this. Let's move to orders now. So DEFCON 1 clearly is when they're actively attacking you or they're supporting units against you or they're entering DMZ zones without permission. They're contradicting what they promised to do or they're refusing to help you. All of those are bad signs. 
DEFCON 2, units are gathering near your centers. They're leaving other borders undefended. Uh, there may be some suspicious unit movement. Um, look at their units and, and think about why all of their units are moving the way they are. And sometimes there are some that don't make sense other than to antagonize you. Um, and this could also uh, take the form of blocking your growth. That's another indirect way of causing a problem. And that's why this one's not DEFCON 1, but blocking your growth is a problem in a relationship. DEFCON 3. This is where you'll get excuses. You'll get accidental orders, missed orders maybe, or failing to help you. This is a passive stab. Uh, they might passively undermine your growth. They might make poor tactical choices. And remember that sometimes those things they may claim later, uh, that would be reflected in your press score. Uh, they may claim that it was an accident, but we know that when you're playing higher level games, there are very few accidents. So uh, pay attention to that. DEFCON 4 is steering clear of your centers, they're following through on their promises, they're allowing you to grow. Uh, some cases they might even be encouraging or offering to uh, to help you grow. I guess that would happen in, in the, uh, the press, but you can also make an offer on the board by uh, actually moving out of a center and allowing you to move into that one as part of a deal. Uh, DEFCON 5 is actively coordinating with you. This is supporting and following through on what they'll say they do. This helps, they're helping you grow. And often they'll be leaving their back door open to you so that shows a level of trust and it sometimes takes a little while to get to a defcon 5. now if you're at a defcon 1 then you need to face the threat you need to mobilize and you need to defend against it there's no other choice there defcon 2 don't stretch yourself too thin keep your units within range to support and defend and you can be cautiously optimistic there defcon 3 is hoping for the best but preparing for the worst that's also cautiously optimistic. And DEFCON 4 is working towards mutual growth. DEFCON 5 um, is leaving a skeleton crew. This is something that I often do where I'll leave, say, one unit back just to make sure that my allies don't get too tempted. If they don't know where that unit's going to be, it's going to be in one of my centers, uh, but it, they're less likely to try for a stab when they don't know that they can unequivocally uh, make it happen. So um, that is one uh, little tr little surprise I, I like to leave behind. So I'll post a JPEG of this tool under the community tab of the Legendary Tactics homepage in case you want to download it and give it a try. And please let me know too how it works for you or if it doesn't work. Uh, it's certainly not perfect at this stage. This is my first attempt at using it, but perhaps with the community's help, we can refine it a little bit more. We can add a few more behaviors in there, uh, make it a little more precise, and we'll see how functional we can make this tool together. All right, let us dive into the game. Now, I don't generally do this kind of lengthy and hypercritical analysis in my videos, but since my opponent in France is Ezio, he's representing Diplo Strats, I better not disappoint. This will likely be the longest diplomacy video I ever make, and I hope that Captain Meme will be really proud of this. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of really deep and close analysis, check out Captain Meme, Meme's channel, uh, Diplostrats, uh, and don't forget to stab the like, like button to encourage me to do more like this. Okay, so some things I notice. Uh, we better get the game back to its original state. Spring 1901. So I do notice if we take a look at uh, my, this, this, these are all of the notes I took throughout the game and all of the scores for the nations. I notice that some alliance patterns emerge throughout the course of the game. And once powers begin to trust or distrust each other, I see that it does take some time for the scores to adjust. And after the winter of 03, for instance, you'll notice that I never found a way back to profitable discussions with Russia. And after spring of 03, I had complete and unwavering trust in Italy. But perhaps that's too many spoilers for you. So let's get back into the game here. Okay, so we've got our first and opening moves here. Uh, let's, uh, I better introduce you to each of the players actually. We'll start with Russia. This uh, began the game as Lady Razor. He's known for his artistic creations with the diplomacy briefing. In my initial interactions with him, he was very friendly and very open. Moving along to Turkey, this is played by Oliver Lug. Uh, he's made a fantastic video called The Game of Knife. It's really well done. Uh, what's interesting with his press is he's very cagey and very conservative. That's my initial read on him. And uh, that, that can be a little concerning uh, when you are in Austria. That's who I'm playing in this game uh, because Russia and Turkey may be up to something, but we'll see how that goes. 
Next, we've got Italy is played by Ambi. Uh, he's, he's a great guy. He's a podcaster from Down Under. We actually had a chance to catch up with him in his 80th episode back in October. Uh, he asked us a lot about our channel and, and what we were doing with diplomacy, and uh, and it was a great discussion. Their podcast a lot of fun. So um, what I noticed in his initial press is he's very indecisive. He really, he's revealed that he wants a big opening, and he talks a lot. And so loose lips sink ships. Ambi, if you're listening to this, you better watch out because you gave a lot away early on. Now, um, what's interesting is initially he said he was not going to move to tier. We did, we agreed to DMZ it. And uh, as you can see by this move, uh, he decided to go there anyways. So this this tested my, uh, my threat tool, diplomacy um, assessment threat, very early on. And um, I'll let you know how that went in a moment. But um, moving on to Germany, uh, this is Ed Sullivan. He's Go Horns Go. He plays actively in the tournaments. Uh, lots of great success. He's a pod caster on YouTube, works with Humble the Heap, and his channel is called The Diplomats. Uh, right off the hop, he's not very chatty. Now, I wouldn't expect Germany to be too chatty at this stage because um, generally his efforts will be focused on the east and uh, mine should be focused uh, sorry mine should be on the east and and his will be on the west so um, let's move on to France I've already told you this is Ezio who's representing Diplostrats they have a YouTube channel channel with Captain Meme uh, they do really in-depth analysis of diplomacy games and right off the hop it seems uh, that he's likely allied with England those were just my initial thoughts Okay, moving on to England. Uh, England is Florida man, so he's recently got back and in, gotten back into the game and into content creation and the hobby. He's been around for a long time, and he's got some really uh, creative and, and interesting diplomacy uh, commentary. So he's very complimentary and very friendly. Uh, he doesn't seem to want to talk tactics early on, which makes sense as England because there's not a lot to share there with me at that stage. So. Um, let's move this forward now. Um, and as I said, so the only really surprising move here was um, having Ambi move into Trollia, which caused me a little bit of concern. Um, and you can also see that uh, Warsaw is advancing on Germany, Marseille is advancing on Germany, and of course we've got Italy there. So Germany is in a world of hurt right off the hop. Um, and Russia was actually encouraging me to go into... Uh, uh, ba here as well. I decided against that because my feeling was that there were going to be too many people from what I had heard heading that way. Um, he'd given me the sense that uh, France was was doing the same and that would have made it dicey then trying to decide who's going to get Munich, who's going to get Berlin um, and I didn't want to antagonize Germany that early so I decided against that maneuver. Um, we do have the setup for Lepanto here and uh, this was something that Italy and I had talked about about possibly doing early on. I mean, it's very cliche, uh, but if you have a, an Italy who's willing to do this, excellent. Uh, um, Russia moving the northern opening is actually great for me. That's what I really like to see. Not a lot of pressure down here. Uh, so this would be a great chance if Turkey wanted to get together with me to um, work against Russia's southern side, but um, we'll see how that turns out. Let's move forward. Uh, this is fall 1901, and uh, I'll just go to my notes here. So Russia is still communicating very well. He's asking for help. He wants um, me to move on Germany. And uh, Turkey is still very neutral and non-committal. So um, right off the hop, I'm thinking maybe this isn't the guy I want to work with because um, he's avoiding the Black Sea, which is a bad sign for me because he's likely uh, in discussions with Russia about that. That would have been a great chance for him if he'd, if he'd moved to Armenia and the Black Sea there. Um, he would have had Russia in a stranglehold. So he might be a little bit too indecisive for what I like, the way I like to play. Um, Italy. Um, the question with Italy was whether I should stab him or not stab him right off the, the hop. And this is where I went to my uh, assessment tool because um, he had, so my press score for him was one 
um, because um, he he was actively um, angry at this point that I had attempted to go to Venice. Um, but I'll explain my rationale in a second. Um, my orders, I put him at a two because he he pleaded and said, you know, this this I it was a last minute decision. I went there, um, you know, I I wanted to move on Munich, which he actually eventually did. Uh, but the problem is, from my perspective, having a unit in Tyrolia when I could potentially have Trieste moving to Albania, leaving both Vienna and Trieste open was a problem, especially since the Ionian and uh, Turkey, who was being non-communicative, um, could block me in Greece. So I really didn't want to see me blocked in Greece uh, and lose Vienna or Trieste and uh, really start the game in a bad position that way. Um, I did actually suggest to Ambi that he should retreat to Venice, and I was hoping that he would do so so that we would have a standoff um, and then I could plead for forgiveness and you know tell him that I'd suggested that um, he retreat. So um, I, I don't think he he bought my intentions early. I, I, I didn't actually want to attack him here, but because my assessment tool had said, you know, he's sitting on Vienna, he's sitting on Trieste, he could do some damage in Greece and he's lied to you right out of the first turn. Um, I listened to the tool and I made the, uh, the move on Venice. So uh, moving on to Germany, He's getting completely pummeled in force. But um, funny, in fall 1901, France supports Ruhr to Munich. And I believe that Burgundy was supposed to support Italy into there. Um, and I'm actually not that surprised because the main reason that Tyrolia would move to Munich uh, would be to actually build units and then attack France and, and join up with Germany. So um, that makes sense for me. France is solidifying an alliance with Germany by saying, hey, I'm going to help you block this threat because you've got two units on Munich. And uh, the last thing that France wants to see is Germany to fall really quickly. So um, that, that makes perfect sense. Now, England up here is making an aggressive play, getting his army into Norway. And if you are Russia, you don't like to see that because then he's moving to St. Petersburg and potentially um, breaching uh, further into Moscow. So uh, Germany did not block or bump um, Russia and Sweden. So it looks like those two are working together. I mean, um, Silesia could have taken Berlin for free there and Germany didn't seem uh, to mind that at all. So there was a lot of trust early on from those two. This could have gone very badly for Germany, but um, he's actually going to pick up two dots and not lose Munich. So he's actually in a pretty decent position here. So let's move to my notes on France. Uh, yes, he's got uh, a standard opening. Um, not much being given away there. Uh, his press, I'm scoring him at a four. His order's at a five. He's not uh, particularly threatening, uh, but he's also not very communicative. And, um, oh, France too. Um, interesting, France is off to a really great start here, actually. I'm, I'm scoring him at 4-4. Four, four. And uh, he's got the chance for three builds. He ends up with uh, Belgium and Portugal, but um, he did not uh, did not move towards Spain. So he actually only had the, the two builds. He could have potentially gotten Munich um, with help from Italy. So, um, but he's also got the Spain in his back pocket. So savvy player, looks like a, a strong opening here. Let's move along now to winter 1901. So we give Russia a four for press and a four for orders. Uh, he's built two armies and uh, looks like he believes he's with Turkey. Um, so the question is if he's with Turkey because he's he's not building in Sevastopol. I mean, he could have put a second fleet down there uh, to ensure that he takes the Black Sea and he didn't. So it looks like those two are together, which is bad news for me. Fortunately, I took picked up two builds, which will secure my homeland against Italy. Um, and he's going with armies in Moscow and Warsaw. So it really looks like he wants to go for a land war against Germany or, or possibly a northern war against England. So it uh, could be something going on on there. Um, but the possibility is too that Turkey and Russia are both coming for me and uh, he'll, he'll attempt to slide into Galicia, Ukraine, and then he's got, I mean, it, it's positive that he's got the fleet in Romania because he can't make an inland attack against me. So um, moving on to Turkey, we've got uh, press of two. Uh, there's not much communication coming from Turkey here. So his early game um, is, is, 
a little bit worrisome from an Austrian perspective. Uh, his orders aren't particularly offensive to me, though, so I'm scoring him at a four there. So I'm getting a bit of a contradiction between my press and my orders for him because he's got that extra fleet, which suggests he actually wants to go for the Mediterranean, which would be a battle more so against Italy than for me. I'm actually offering up Greece here uh, to either Italy or to Turkey, because I don't think ultimately I can hold that position. So I'd rather be a little more land-based, maybe get Bulgaria or something. And so I've proposed that to Turkey, but um, to, uh, to swap and give him the, the naval presence and me the land presence, but uh, not sure if he'll go for that or not. Let's move to Italy here. So we've got... Um, so it, it, Italy didn't seem too mad about my attempt and to uh, move into Venice. Uh, he seems to have forgiven me. And um, he's uh, he's got his um, second fleet going in Naples, which suggests that he's also going for control of the Mediterranean, which is wise as an Italian player. That's where his strength should lie. Moving on to Germany, I'm scoring him at a 3-4. There's not a lot of discussion here. Uh, he makes a fleet build, which suggests distrust of England. I'm sure England is not happy to see that, uh, but I sure am. And uh, having the fleets in Denmark and uh, Key are, are two good reasons to think that uh, England might be in trouble here. So, and then we get uh, France is, uh, he's actually, um, I'm scoring him at a 4-4. He's seeking information from me about the alliance structures at this point. And uh, we've got him building a fleet in Marseille, perhaps defensive, but if he was thinking of an attack on England, the Brest fleet might've been a better choice there considering Italy has actually gone mostly the other direction. So uh, maybe he's thinking of sneaking in the back door here on Italy, that could be. Um, his plans. So moving on to England, uh, I'm getting some friendly banter from him. He's not giving much away though. His press four orders five. Okay. So I like his Austria having a strong core, but uh, the problem is you draw some attention when you're at five builds in winter 1901. So that could be an issue. But I mean, Germany's at five, France is at five, Russia's at six. So I can hopefully fly under the radar there. All right, moving along, we have got spring 1902. So Russia uh, communicated openly with me here, um, but his orders were definitely putting pressure on me and I didn't like them. Um, he said he was doing this. I, I said I would prefer he didn't. So I'm putting his press at three, orders at three. Uh, that supported move into Galicia was a problem. And I suspected that he was using those armies against me because he seemed too friendly with Germany and I think he wanted Germany's help with England. So I attempted to block if, if it had been a single unit moving to Galicia. And I also pushed him out of Romania uh, because I think I need to um, try to align my uh, units there in order to prevent a full-on incursion from him. So Turkey seems to be going uh, in a southern direction. He's not going against Russia. So I, it looks like we might have an Italy-Austria forming against a Russia Turkey here, uh, which means we're going to get bogged down for a little bit of time. And that can be a problem. Turkey presses four. Um, he agreed to take on Russia and then he did the exact opposite. So um, maybe my assessment of his of his press was wrong, um, but my orders read on him was a two. So based on that, I didn't trust him. Um, the fact that uh, he's, he's moving to the med um, tells me that a juggernaut is forming. So uh, not good for me but uh, we work with what we've got. Italy, I've got his press at a three. He's fairly neutral. Um, his orders are at a two because he supported himself back into Venice. He didn't trust me at all. Um, he has supported himself into the Ionian, but because I'm in Greece, that could also be a problem for me. So he's, he's closing in. However, he is conversely potentially safeguarding his position. Okay, let's move on to Germany. I have no concerns with Germany in this phase. His press is five, his orders are five. I think he's occupied elsewhere. Uh, very strange, um, I mean, quadruple bounce in Ruhr there. Uh, that seems like it was probably orchestrated for them to establish some trust. 
Uh, but if you're England, you don't want to see this because that's some pretty good coordination there. Uh, England now facing a threat from Ska as well. And uh, you've got Berlin moving into uh, key. So uh, Russia and Germany are friends. And uh, again, that doesn't necessarily bode well for me, but I don't have any immediate concerns for him. France, um, no concerns there. Press five, orders five. Uh, as I say, it looks like he's going against England. Uh, England is in trouble. Uh, his press five, orders five. He really needs to get Germany on side, and uh, I don't see that happening. He's not getting help from Germany, and he needs to be concerned. Let's move forward now to fall 1902. Okay, so Russia. I've scored his press at a two and his orders at a one because he's overtly hostile. Um, so this is actually, we had a change of players here. Uh, Lady Razor was unable to continue in the game and so the village idiot joined and um, the village idiot is a very talented player a very strong player uh, he's ranked very highly on the v-dip uh, he does well he's in the nexus tournaments and so uh, i've been warned by uh, some of the players that he is quite talented so this adds a new dynamic and uh, one thing i try to do is I, I feel like it's only sporting to give people sort of an assessment of where the game is at and whether they trust me or not is something else but i try to be as honest as possible just so he can hit the ground running um, and so I tried to get him to retreat to uh, Sevastopol there and uh, in the the where was that uh, or sorry into the Black Sea so that we could stab Turkey but he wasn't interested in that at all so um, we might I might have some complication from media wars here too because we have a bit of baggage where um, he was down to a single unit and I treated him badly and, and attacked him and took some of his centers when we were forming the stalemate line um, in the end he, he came around and uh, helped form that stalemate line in media wars one um, but he did so reluctantly and so he, he may not trust me um, right from the outset uh, Turkey press two orders two he's fairly quiet and I can tell he wants the juggernaut. Um, he seems a very honest sort. He's actually very upfront about what he's after. So um, at least there's that. If I do end up working with him, at least he's very straightforward. Italy presses at four. He's really coming around. Um, orders at three. Now he came into Trieste. I was in a bad position here because as Austria, I can't take on Russia and Turkey and Italy. You just can't take three on. I needed one of them to be my ally. I knew it wasn't going to be Russia and Turkey, so I needed to negotiate with Italy. So I, I, I actually said, please take Trieste uh, because he needs to grow. I need an ally, and if he has a little bit more strength, then he can put some pressure on Turkey. The only problem is we need England to hold uh, so that that side of the map doesn't get resolved too early because we're going to be in a bit of a struggle here. We got press for Germany as a four. His orders are a two. I am not liking that. This was a complete surprise, an unannounced move to Ba, and uh, that doesn't impress me much um, because... Uh, it, it suggests his intentions are to join Russia against me. He claims it's there to help me just in case it's needed. But this is one of those situations where I didn't ask for that help and having it join in, in into the, the fight, uh, which is actually sitting on Vienna, um, is not very helpful to me at all. I mean, if he'd gone to Silesia, maybe that would be helpful. So um, there's a conflict here between what he's doing and what he's saying, and I, I don't trust him at this point. So Russia uh, didn't know he was moving there either and um so i wonder i mean sure maybe he was trying to defend against italy pulling off a bohemian crusher sliding venice up into tier and tier into bohemia but yeah, it's a bit sketchy so um i had asked him to help maintain the balance of power by taking sweden from russia and uh he did not help with that so right away germany here now is is not in my best books and um we'll we'll see if we can continue to work with him because i really need germany to uh be pushing to the uh west instead so france wow great start here he really knows his game he's growing strong he really has no threats at all um he picks up spain he's he's gonna get that build he's at a five five for his score and uh moving into the irish sea this is really bad news so uh england is not in great shape so i've scored him at a five five but um 
yeah, he's he's not given a lot away. I've made some suggestions to him. Um, those sometimes aren't well received when you're you're being attacked by three powers all at once. So um, that's not good for him. Moving along to winter 1902. Okay, press is a score of three here, so we're I'm, we're, I'm, I'm working. We're, we're trying to get along, Russia and I. Um, the orders, there's no orders there from him, so that's not applicable. Uh, we've got lots of dialogue. There's good potential to work together. We both like to negotiate, and I'm really hoping that we can work against Turkey together. It would be in his interest. It would be in my interest. Uh, but it's also in his interest to work with Turkey against me. So um, him securing Norway and Sweden, and then uh, England disbanding Finland his north is looking quite strong and he's only got two units there if he's got Germany on side then uh, which which he clearly does uh, he's he's really got a heavy southern presence here though so uh, we need to change that uh, so the press from Turkey is a score of one not applicable in the orders there were no orders that turn uh, he didn't get a build and he's very quiet he's not a risk taker and spring um, will likely be when he makes a play for Greece, if he's going to make a play. And um, we'll see how that turns out. Italy, press of five, orders of four. Uh, he's been doing exactly what he said. He's advancing on France. Uh, he's hoping to um, put a bit of pressure there, which might help to keep the power on that side of the map a little more balanced because France can't just trample all over England as long as Italy is a bit of a threat there. But that does take away a bit of pressure against Turkey. So, um, so he, I mean, Italy could go either way here, um, but he could stalemate France in um, the Western Med there. So, um, but it keeps pressure off my flank. As long as France isn't there, you know, if Italy's happy with his army in Trieste, he can help out and hopefully he'll continue to do that. So winter 1902. Uh, we've got Germany is not very chatty. He's likely looking to grow at England's expense. Press of two, orders not applicable. And France, uh, he's made some very strong assessments in the game. He seems to be uh, in really great shape. And I score him at a 5-5. Five, five. Moving along, we move into the spring of 1903. So we've got press from Russia is at a two, orders at one. Uh, we're on friendly terms, I would say, um, but it's clear he's going to dig in in Romania. He says he accidentally sent me a message that Turkey is going to tap Serbia, and uh, then that way I can be sure to win Bulgaria, but make no mistake, he didn't send that press to me accidentally. He, he wanted me to know that. He wanted me to vacate Romania, and uh, he that that's a passive stab. So he passively stabbed Turkey there so that I could make some gains, and then Russia and I could potentially start working together. However, I made a point um, in this turn to take a note of when that message was accidentally sent to me. Um, I messaged Turkey immediately, and I knew what language was used in it, and I let Turkey know um, what had happened because I really need that alliance to break up. And as long as Turkey is loyal to to Russia, that's a problem because Russia's playing both sides. He's getting me to attack Turkey, and then he's preparing to attack me. Um, as you can see, he's tapping Bud there, Budapest. So um, I really needed Turkey to know that he had been betrayed there by Russia, and I needed proof, which was the timing of the message as well as the language of the message to show, and, and it actually worked. So, um, but he's still with Russia, so press one, orders one. Um, he doesn't realize that uh, Russia's really coming from behind, I mean, with four units sitting there. He's taking room. Um, he's probably looking to get into the Black Sea because there's nothing Turkey can do about that now. And then he can get a second Navy build in Sevastopol. Uh, so it's looking bad for Turkey, but uh, he's so committed in the med there that it can be a bit of a problem. So he's hemmed in. Um, the Juggernaut is dead now that I popped his army uh, because he doesn't have the power to, to do much to help Russia. Uh, with the West resolved, I mean, look at what's going on in England. This is, this is really bad. So this is a classic sea lion. We've got uh, Germany and France completely invading the coast. Spring of 03, it took an extra turn or two to pull it off. But we've got Belgium going to York. We've got, um, I mean, England's in full-on retreat. And we've got another convoy here so uh, from Spain up to Wales. 
So that is a serious problem uh, for not only England, but for me as well. So since the West is resolved, Italy, Turkey, and I are going to be completely dead unless we act because Russia's huge. We're going to have Russia, Germany, and France really powerful, and they'll just encroach on us and take us out. So I this, this for me was my biggest mistake in the game was attacking and taking Bulgaria. Um, it, was, it was both a mistake and not a mistake because it was the thing that turned Turkey against Russia, but... I, I really enabled Russia to get a foothold uh, down here by helping him out. And so um, if, if the three of us are going to survive this game, then we really need to join up now. I mean, anytime there's a sea lion happens, the rest of the board needs to act immediately. So, um, But I have proven to him that Russia set Turkey up. So hopefully it's enough to unite the South. And so that's what I'm calling for now. Um, Italy needs to face France. Turkey needs to help me. We need to uh, work against Russia because we are in for a massive problem if we don't act now. So we've got a 5-5 score. I'll tell you, the rest of the game for Italy is a 5-5. So he's supporting my units. He's coordinating well. Um, and he's a real deal as allies go. So I appreciate that. Um, Germany presses a 2 and his orders are a 1. So again, now he's supporting himself into Trollia. Um, admittedly, I was a little bit concerned that Italy was setting up to move in there, but I think Italy and I need to be together. So I'm fully with Italy now. I was a little bit uh, hesitant about him until this point, but uh, Germany coming in and, and moving that into there is, is a real problem for us. So we're going to need to get rid of him, but I've also got Russia encroaching as well. So... Um, this this isn't great. Germany isn't talking much with me, but he doesn't. He says he doesn't want to see me fall. Um, but I'm in his noose now, and that is hard to deny. France is playing a great game. Uh, he just landed uh, landed in England. They're really coordinated. He talks strategy. We're very neutral to each other, so he's a five five as well. England. What can you say? That was completely devastating. But I still rank him at a 5-5. He's absolutely no threat to me. And uh, I mean, maybe I should rank him as a threat to me now because if he collapses too soon, then I'm in trouble. Let's move on to fall of 1903. Uh, so Russia is at a 2-1. He's definitely avoiding any kind of commitment here. He seems like he wants Turkey and I to fight as he waits in the wings to collect the spoils. This is a style of play that I call the vulture style where, you know, he kind of eggs us on and tries to get us fighting with each other. And then he just waits and takes the easy builds or waits until we offer him something. So uh, we really need to shake this dynamic up. Um, but Turkey, Turkey is still feeling a little bit like he wasn't betrayed. So he's actually accepting Russia's help against me. He's helping Russia actively. Um, and, oh, right. So now I'm remembering. This was the turn where in order to get Turkey on side, I had to prove it to him. And I had to do that by sacrificing a unit. So I, I told him, I said, listen, I could I could dig in in Bulgaria. I could hold against your attack. And, uh, you know, that would be great. Or I can sacrifice my unit. I'll make a, an attack on Rum. I know it will fail. You can take Bulgaria back, which will uh, allow your navy to move into Constantinople. Then you can use your build to build a fleet in Ankara, and that gets you strong against Russia. This could have completely backfired and he could have used those units against me, but I basically said, I'm willing to sacrifice a unit and a center, which I could hold, uh, in order to help you out. So um, that, was, that was a pivotal turn, and uh, in return, he also allowed uh, Greece to move into the Aegean and uh, that allows me to retreat to Greece so that was a bit of a complicated term but uh, in terms of how alliance structures went that was an important one to help sh um, get get Turkey on side and to shift the alliance against Russia there because um, really Russia is just going to steamroll us if he just keeps pounding away and if he gets into the Black Sea and takes out Turkey then that is a significant problem so spring 1903 just consulting my notes here okay yeah so okay 
uh, with Italy, he's still helping. He's fully on board with uniting the South. He's also starting to mobilize against France. And I think we stand a chance of surviving. Um, and that's a problem when you're at this stage in the game. I'm at five units and my thoughts are on survival. Just the, I mean, I've <laughs> look at look at where the units are. I've got Germany, Italy, Russia, and Turkey all immediately around my center. So this will be a miracle if I can survive. I mean, England is probably out of the game before me, but I really am likely to fall very soon um, based on the amount of host potentially hostile units around me. So uh, Germany actually gave me his direct confirmation that he says I'm fine here. However, he's, he's also holding me hostage with two units sitting on Vienna. So um, he doesn't want to see me fall or so he claims, but France gets two belts in England. Germany gets Belgium. I score him at a 3-2 this turn. France, wow, he's got a really great shot at topping this board or soloing if he plays his cards right. I mean, if he plays the mid game as well as he, as he plays the early game, then he's going to be great. His relationship with Germany will be the key. He needs to keep that alliance strong because if Germany turns on him, that's about all that can really uh, get him in trouble. I score him at a 5-5. Five, five. England's at a 5-5. Five, five, and yeah, he's, he's in real trouble. Um, and of course we've got, uh, so he had a chance to force his way into the North Sea there. Um, had he tapped, um, where did he need? Yeah. So he needed to move England, um, the English channel into the North Sea with support from Eddie to try to potentially hold that space. But, uh, unfortunately he didn't, didn't land that. So his game is probably over now. So some tactical choices that weren't amazing there. Uh, but I mean, what can you do when you're facing that many powers? Let's move on to winter 1903. Okay. So we've got Russia is scoring at a 2-1, presses at 2, threat uh, level orders 1, and the retreat to Silesia broadcasts a really interesting message there. Uh, he's not defending his holdings in Scandinavia. I mean, Germany could take those or join with England to, uh, to take them. Uh, he's doubling down on his southern presence with an army in Warsaw, and he's suggesting a potential incursion into Germany, but I suspect that uh, he, he wants me to attack first. Before he makes a move on Germany, he wants me, and, and so I think he's doing the same thing he did against Turkey, where he wants me fighting with Germany so that he can come in and attack me or Germany while our attentions are focused elsewhere. Um, Vi seems to be a player who likes to wait, see how things will develop, let other people get into conflicts, and then he moves in for the kill when he gets an opportunity. So uh, I suspect uh, that's what he's up to. I'm going to disband the Aegean here uh, because I also want to cement my friendship with Turkey, and that unit is not helping with that. So Fleet Ankara is a pleasant sight to see that, our, that navy drop there because now Turkey can own the Black Sea, we can take Romania, we can push back against Russia. I just need to keep Turkey on side and keep the South strong. Fleet, um, Russia has taken notice though. All right, so Turkey, I'm scoring him four for press, five for orders. Uh, he's, I think that's the final sign that he believes me. I've given up a center for him to grow, and we might be able to make the Commonwealth Alliance of the Australian Ambi, the Canadian, me in Australia, and the uh, Brit in uh, Turkey might actually work. So we've got Italy. He is proving to be a reliable ally. He's communicating openly. He needs to take Marseille or Spain to be effective. And with the right orders and no German interference, he can make this happen. He could, he could really cause a problem here for France. I hope he doesn't let up too early on France because um, he really needs to keep, keep France in check. We've got Germany scoring a 2-2. So uh, this is this he's becoming a real problem for me here. Uh, he's still not retreating those units. I'm just waiting for the attack to happen. Uh, usually it's a bad idea for Germany to attack Austria, but he seems very confident in his relationship with Russia here. So I think he wants to know how alliances will resolve though before he launches into a new conquest against me. So it's not that he really wants to help me out. It's just that he might actually need me a little bit later. So it's probably self-interest that's kind of keeping him on track there. But minimal press from him, that is not a good sign. 
So 5-5 five, five from France. I mean, this is the time he's suggesting the possibility of going north. If he's hitting Russia, that helps me. With Italy's pressure on the south, he may not actually do, do that northern attack. Um, but I don't know if I trust him anyways. He's not really particularly well equipped to go north. But uh, maybe he's hitting Germany, but doubtful. I think they're too intertwined. Um, so a full-scale defense against Italy isn't great for him because everybody else will be growing or shrinking and he'll be holding steady. But um, we'll, we'll see what comes of that. So uh, England has one unit left. So his only hope is to become a Janissary fleet and to join with Germany or France to attack the other. But my guess is they've moved very quickly to get rid of him. He's not going to be happy. They'll probably just take him out. That would not surprise me at all. Let's move on. We're moving into the spring of 1904. So uh, Russia, 1-1. One, one. So DEFCON 1, this is... This has gone nuclear. There's no doubt about it. He's coming for me. Uh, he really wants to hang with France and Germany. I mean, why wouldn't you? They're in a much better position than I am. Uh, I'm in, in a bit of trouble here. And this is where I really needed Germany on side. I needed all I needed to know. And th this was a huge turn because um, I asked Germany if he, um, if Russia had asked him to tap Vienna because it made a difference on my play. Uh, I could have saved that unit. Number one, if Germany wasn't aggressive against me, that would have been great and Germany didn't reply so to me that that gave me the answer yes he did ask to tap Vienna yes he was probably going to do it my problem was I couldn't change my attack orders with Turkey in time because what I would have done is move Galicia down to Romania with support from Serbia and Bulgaria uh, but there were only a few hours left and with the the time difference I couldn't make that adjustment quick enough to make that happen because then I could have um, actually destroyed that uh, Romanian army and I uh, would have been in much better shape but uh, instead I lose the unit there so that's a problem but let's move to Turkey so Turkey I'm scoring him at a 4-5 uh, he's becoming reliable he's communicating it's brief but he's affirming that he's working against Russia I like the tone of his writing I like what he's saying uh, he's won the Black Sea that's huge I think he's um, fully on board Italy is at a 5-5, five, five, communicating well. He's directly telling me all of his moves. And perhaps he's being a little bit too honest by telling me everything. Um, because if I were going to stab him, I could use all of that information against him. But I, I'm planning to stick with Italy as long as he doesn't stab me. Because he, he's been a good ally. He was there when I needed him. Um, and so he's the kind of guy I like to work with. Great coordination here. He's supporting the Commonwealth Southern Alliance. That's great. So we've got Germany. I've got him scored at a 1-1. One, one. So he's a big game changer here. I mean, he seems to be now controlling the alliance structure. And a few hours before the order went in, he was dodging this question. Yeah, okay, I've, I've described that already. So um, let's move on to France. I'm scoring him at a 5-4. I've changed his orders from a 5 to a 4 uh, because now he suggests that um, he's heading north, but clearly he's actually mobilizing south. I mean, there's, there's no mistaking his attempt to move two fleets down that way. So he and Germany, again, are coordinated. So this is problematic. And uh, we've got press five, orders five from England, poor fella. I sent a parting message to England. I said, alas, you never stood a chance with the crushing weight of the triple pummel in the north. Poor England. France seems to have some rights of memory in your kingdom, which now to claim his vantage invites him. And you shall be hoisted to the stage and given the soldiers music and rights of war. Adieu. So, um, poor fella, he is not long for this world, but he does survive another turn. That brings us to fall of 1904. So, 1-1 uh, one, one for Russia. I'm fully expecting a Russian-German invasion here. We're communicating, but mostly to chat. Um, that, that kind of chat that happens between opposing generals who are preparing to do battle. And uh, so now this is just a matter of tactics on the board. And I've won Budapest. I had a choice here. Do I let Russia take a build or do I let Germany get it? And I figured, you know what, at this point, I, I really need Germany to be getting a bit stronger so that Russia and France want to think about taking him out. Uh, I'm, I'm going to lose something, right? So 
Turkey is getting into a position to take Sevastopol. Hopefully he will uh, make some good moves to make this happen. And he's at a 5-5. Five, five. Italy is at a 5-5, five, five. and this turn we're swapping Greece for Trieste. Nice to get my home center back. Nice for him to uh, get the Mediterranean center that he can defend better, better for both of us. I think retreating from uh, Leo was a mistake there um, into Tis. Uh, he's easing pressure on France, but France is going to take full advantage of that and press the attack. I mean, you can see supported moves uh, both ways, and sure, Italy didn't have the benefit of knowing what move would happen, but given the previous turn we knew he was coming south so i think he's given up a really strong position there and that could prove problematic so he'll need to get his stalemate line set up quickly what he needs to do is just flummox france set up a line that france can't break through and just say hey i can sit here forever and then maybe germany will start to eye up some of those centers but um we'll see if italy pulls that off Germany is at a 1-1. One, one. Um, we've stopped communicating for now. It's a war and I'll have to do my best to cling to life against the full might of both the Russian and the German units. And that's a problem. They're at uh, six and seven centers respectively against Turkey and I. We're at, he's at four, I'm at four. So they're, they're out gunning us heavily. And uh, I have a choice of giving up to Russia or Germany. I can't stop them both. So I'm going to try depriving Russia of builds and hopefully Germany will start to pressure Scandinavia with his new growth because his builds should be more in the northerly direction um, but uh, Vi and Russia doesn't like being strong armed I'm aware of that but I'm certain to lose more than one build if I let Russia grow so I need to I need to give that growth to Germany France is at a 4-4 still not a lot of contact between us but he's not going for Germany so that's not good he's not going for Russia and uh, my only hope is that Italy can frustrate his movement in the south arrest his growth and as soon as the northern powers start taking centers from each other they'll be destabilized we need that to happen soon and this is game over for England we'll take a moment of silence there all right Moving along into winter of 1904, we've got a score of 1-1. Russia, uh, we have no builds for Russia. So that's, that's nice. Now we get to dance. And I love this part. This is the tactical part of the game where, I'm, I mean, I'm down to three units, uh, but we've got quite a bit of congestion and uh, we're 1904. So my goal now is essentially survival. I need to stay, I mean, look at how I'm completely surrounded still. So my goal will just be to survive, help out where I can, and maybe I'll get some, some growth down the road. But uh, one of my mantras is to never give up, regardless of where you're at in the game. It's a fun game just to work with what you've got. And I mean, I'm under no illusion that I'll be soloing or topping this board, uh, but I've still got lots of play left in this game. Um, and I love the tactical part. This is, this is where it's fun. I don't love having seven units from other nations directly surrounding me, but with the writer orders, I can hold all these bullies at bay. A little bit of diplomacy we'll see what we can do if he attacks me with galicia uh he'll end up in budapest next next turn so i need to stop that so to avoid that what i'm doing is planting seeds with russia that germany and i've been coordinating and if you look at just the tactics it would actually look like i've been allowing germany in and after all i let italy in so why wouldn't i do the same for germany and uh you know i want to cast a little bit about doubt there the next phase of the plan is to get uh what i've told russia is that uh, the next phase of the plan is that germany wants him to take budapest um from galicia and uh then because russia is so risk averse hopefully the fact that he knows that I'm looking for that play will will make him second guess himself and make him not go for that uh, because then then my suggestion to him is that when he's in Budapest he'll collapse his armies down and then we'll just pop that unit and start attacking um, north so um, it's risky but it might not work so we're, we're trying to work an attack out on Germany Russia and I but Frankly, I just don't trust him at this point. He's made absolutely zero moves against Germany. He's been working well with Germany. And when he tells me, yeah, I'm in, I'm let's go. You just attack first. I just, I don't buy that he would do anything that he's promising here. And because of my policy of not lying, I'm not going to tell him that I'm going to attack Germany and then not do it. And I won't tell him that I'm attacking Turkey because I'm not going to do that either. So I'd rather suffer the consequences and, and stay honest here. 
um, probably to my detriment. But uh, Turkey, he's scored at a 5-5. He tells me he's busy with school, but he's confirming and coordinating orders. Uh, sometimes when a player is busy with something like that, it can be good because they don't want to switch alliances and, and think a lot about the game. So let's hope he rides the course here with this alliance. Uh, Italy 5-5. He's working to deflect France. He's still communicating effectively. Germany is at a 1-1. His build shows a uh, continued affinity for working with both Russia and France. Hopefully this backfires soon. I think it'll backfire on him. I mean, really, if you're France and Russia, do you not want to start taking some centers from Germany here? Um, I, I have to be able to hold Russia off. He's, if he's not getting growth from me, then Germany will be forced to give him growth to keep him on side. And the more tension between them trading centers back and forth, the better. France is at a 3-3. He's not communicating much at all. And so this could be a bit of a problem. He's also doing, um, really, he's not doing anything to help my position. So I'm beginning to be more concerned about his strong position and his willingness to let Russia grow completely unchecked. Spring 1905 brings some really good news for me. There was a real threat on Trieste. I managed to uh, not lose that. Held up a bunch of the German units. I managed to take Romania from Russia, and uh, that worked out quite well. Fortunately, he didn't um, go for Budapest from Galicia. Uh, that could have been a problem for me too. So that, that turn could have been way worse. Russia is still ranked at a 1-1. It was pretty clear to both of us that we weren't going to go up against Germany. And uh, I could see that he wasn't committing that way, and neither was I. So, unfortunately, that unit in Romania is uh, free and clear now. We, we get to choose either to hold Romania and take that build, or we can attack Se Sebastopol there. So, um, unfortunately, he did move. Uh, he retreated Warsaw to Moscow. If he hadn't made that play, uh, he, he had some good foresight there, uh, then Sebastopol would have fallen. So, uh, he does have a decently entrenched position there. But otherwise, I would have popped that fleet next turn, and then I would have invited Turkey to take Romania. So I needed to break the German support from Vienna also to make this move happen. So you can see that was a bit of an aggressive play there. Um, but I knew I might lose Trieste to Germany. But again, I was just allowing Germany to, to possibly have the chance to take centers while ensuring that I really went hard against Russia. But fortunately, Italy agreed to break the support from Tyrolia in case he attacked with Vienna. Let's move over to Turkey. He's been steady and strong. He's still at a 5-5. Five five. Um, we're steady and strong. We're staying loyal in terms of Italy. Um, losing uh, the Gulf of Lyon wasn't great. Um, I knew that France really coveted that, that place, and that would have been a really good one to block. Uh, and it, he could have made sure that he blocked that one. There was no other supporting unit there. So uh, that does start to give France an opportunity to break through and push forward here. Um, but we do, at least he got into the Western Med and he's starting to possibly, I mean, he's got some gaps in the line, but he's starting, the Greece uh, Navy is starting to come out too. So he's getting in position to make life harder for the Frenchman. Man, Germany is relentless. He's still a 1-1. There's lots of coordination between him and Russia. France, he's slowly turning into a liability. I'm ranking him at 3-3 this turn. And, uh, I mean, he is showing no signs of either working against Germany or Russia. He's going all in against Italy. And this could be something that really galvanizes and unites Germany and Russia, too. So this could be a problem for France. You'll have to watch out there. Moving forward to fall of 1905. Uh, so we've got Russia at a 1-1. Okay, so here I needed to guess right. Um, Vi is a very defensive-minded player, so I pictured that he would try to use Ukraine to support Sevastopol, and he didn't want me knocking that fleet out. So um, that left the guess, should I defend Budapest or Trieste? And I figured my predictable play was to defend Budapest. Uh, it would have also been very consistent with me letting Germany in and blocking Russia. So once other players start to see my pattern, I like to switch my patterns up so that um, I'm not entirely predictable too. 
But now that he's thinking that way, I, I switched it up. So the only way to stop this double support order uh, to Budapest is for Galicia to tap uh, Romania and Tyr to tap Trieste with both Vienna and Galicia attacking Budapest. So I didn't see all of that happening. There was too much coordination needed to make that happen. And I need someone in the north to get robbed. So if Germany can get robbed by Russia, he may start to feel some angst against Russia and they may begin to break apart. So you can see that uh, Sweden took Denmark and uh, we also managed to then block uh, any forward movement by Germany. So again, this was a pretty solid turn. We held in Romania and uh, overall this, this was great. Moving along to Turkey, super reliable, very patient. Um, he's a 5'5", five five and I'm, I have no concerns about him at this point. Italy, uh, also at a 5'5", five five, he continues to be very helpful. And unfortunately, um, that meant that France pulled off a sweet convoy into Tuscany that turn. So uh, this is a risk. Uh, if Germany doesn't tap Venice, then Italy can pop that unit. But uh, who knows where that, that can stand. Germany is at a 1-1 a one -one this turn. He's not communicating at all, but France and Russia both took a dot from him. I'm assuming that he allowed that, but this is something I can work with because he's probably starting to feel like he's doing all the legwork and they're reaping all the rewards. So uh, we need to work with that. And maybe... Um, I mean, he should be starting to feel like this could be a problem. Um, Burgundy dotting Belgium, I don't think that was asked for, I, I would be guessing. Um, and that also means that he could start to encroach into Holland, and this could be the beginning of a schism between these two. So uh, Germany likely starting to feel a bit of a pinch here. But Russia hasn't been too aggressive, so he may be fine. Um, but this is the incident I needed. Germany drops a unit now, and that's the kind of thing that you can gently point out to people and uh, Russia and France will both be bigger and in better positions and they'll either make their play or Germany will believe that they're about to make their play. He's greatly weakened. He's really vulnerable to attacks now and I, I didn't get my build unfortunately but I still have four centers so um, in retrospect it would have been great to leave Budapest empty and get the build there I also was talking to Turkey about him potentially taking Serbia, but there were so many moving parts there that it was a little bit predict uh, unpredictable. France is making it quite clear that he wants the med and he will never stop. So he is just putting unrelenting pressure. He's throwing everything he's got there. So the suggestion is that he and Germany might be together. So if I'm going to try to break up the alliance, I need probably to work the angle that France and Germany um, have played a solid game together. They've been really loyal to each other and they need to start pressuring Russia in the north or he's going to turn against one or the other of them. And I think that's likely true that that, that would in fact happen. So um, hopefully something diplomatically, I mean, really at this point, because I'm down to three units, uh, diplomacy is the part of the game that I need to play most here. So uh, press three, orders three for him. That takes us to our next turn, winter 1905. Okay, so another army built in Warsaw there. Any day, I'd love to see that Northern fleet go down. But Russia's playing it really carefully. He wants to at least keep the pretense up that he's friendly to both Germany and France. Uh, the Warsaw army isn't particularly effective against me because he's really bunged up there. And he wants it to be very clear to his allies that I'm, and, and to me, that I'm not going to break in um, through Russia that way. But I don't really need to break in there. I just need to stop him from breaking into Austria. And so long as Turkey stays with me, um, I think Italy's going to stay with me. There's a little bit of guesswork involved, but I think I can hold a little bit longer, even though Russia and Germany have way more units than me. Um, I'm, I'm in a position that allows me to actually cause a great deal of inconvenience for them. So um, we've got uh, press at five, orders at five for Turkey. He's really busy with school. He's holding strong. It seems like unwavering support there. 
Italy's also at a 5-5. He's still chatting. He's still friendly. Um, he, I mean, it, it's not beyond salvation, that uh, unit in Tuscany there. He can still uh, defend against that. And I would actually be trying to pop that unit if I were him. And he really, his only job here is to frustrate France to the point that France gives up and, and thinks it's easier to stab Germany, um, possibly with Italy's help. And if that shift happens, then I would jump in as well. So... Uh, we really just need to weather the storm here if we're going to survive in the south. Germany. So I'm, I'm changing my score here for, for Germany. He's going to a three for press and a two for orders. Um, I've actually started to make some breakthroughs with him. We're starting to communicate actively. I think um, it may be getting to him that uh, he's not in a great position. I mean, look at whose position would you take, Russia or Germany? I mean, Russia, no one can really do any harm to him. He's sitting on seven units. Germany's on six, and he's crushed between two superpowers. So... Germany Germany really should think about um, joining with France or with Russia here against one of the other two. And this is what we need because the South is with him if, if he does it now. If he hangs on, which I think he may be tempted to do um, because he's, he's hedging a bit, um, you can detect that in uh, the press. But um, so really... What other unit could he disband here? Bohemia uh, needed to go. I would have preferred if he disbanded Tyrolia, um, but at least it wasn't uh, Key or Eddy. I've made a plea to France and Germany that we remove the Russian threat. Uh, France says he's not keen. He doesn't actually like how Backstabber allows three-way messages. Um, I argued that this is a great way to put everything on the table right up front and say, hey, you know what, I'm saying this to both of you. But he countered that, but then you just go behind their back and write to them and say, by the way, everything I said to Germany was BS there. So um, he, he has a good point that way. Um, but I still do think there is value in three-way chats like that. But unfortunately, I'm not really getting much of a response from France in terms of working against Russia. So um, the plea is out and... Uh, We'll see what happens. So France is uh, scored at a 2-3, two, 2 for press, 3 for orders. Um, he's just not really replying to my messages now. So he may be planning a stab on Germany with Russia. And maybe he just doesn't want to tip his hand to me and give too much away. The fleet in Brest is likely to support to uh, the Mid-Atlantic and prevent Ambi from winning his way out. But it could be used against Russia or Germany. There is some flexibility there. Let's move the game forward now to spring of 1906. So Russia had such a massive chance to make a huge play here and to break this game open. I would have loved to see it. He had Germany on the ropes. A move from north to Kiel and, and uh, Prussia uh, would have been devastating. And he already knew that I was ready to help him here because I needed those alliances to break up, but he didn't take it. Um, so to me, this meek play suggests that he wants to ride Germany's tailcoats to the end. Uh, my comms weren't well received by Russia. He believes I've, I'm holding him at knife point. Um, I'm not sure I understand how or why um, it looks like I'm doing that. I mean, I'm, I'm playing the alliances and doing what I can to survive, but I certainly am not in a position of power here. Um, but I'm not having any kind of luck at all working diplomacy with, with Fi. So um, I think my best option for, for that is to just shut down my comms entirely with him. Um, if I can just survive and use tactics for now, at some point I might become useful later in the game. But um, it seems that my diplomacy is completely fixed. Failing, so um, I, I just haven't found an effective strategy to to do that yet. And that's part of this game is some sometimes you'll communicate really well with some players and, and not with others. And in this case, um, our styles of play just don't mesh well together. And uh, so we're just, I mean, he's in, in a pretty strong position, so he doesn't really need me. So I can't say that I blame him. Moving on to Turkey, um, I'm actually changing his press down to a four and his orders to a five. Um, I didn't actually hear from him here. Uh, my threat assessment um, tells me that he's busy, not betraying. Um, I invited him into Romania there uh, because I want him to get that extra build. And I knew that I'd be able to tap Galicia and then retreat safely to Serbia. So this was completely planned. Um, he didn't stab me there. And uh, that gets him an extra build. It keeps him happy. It gives him an incentive uh, to not lose that center to Russia then because that's on the forward line. It also lets him coordinate his units better against Sevastopol. So when he wants to make that attack, he can be sure that it's going to happen. And it encourages him 
that he's growing. I, I think it really dissuades a stab on Greece and Nap all at once. So um, I think that was a, a play that's good for our alliance. And it also puts me into a better position in Serbia to either defend Trieste or Budapest. And so we're a little bit more self-sufficient and we're a little bit more compact. So um, I have to say for Italy this turn, I'm scoring him at a 5-5. That's a stellar defense right there. Uh, with Germany worried about a French attack, he opted not to tap Venice. And that's what we needed. Tirolia just uh, supported Vienna. And that was cool. And that made all the difference. So hopefully that annoys France enough to keep the rift between them alive. But that also tells me that that lets me see a little bit into Germany's mind. Because if Germany were 100% committed to France here, he would support France and keep him alive. And one of them would take Venice. And he didn't. So that's a great sign. It gives Ambi a chance to defend. And uh, But I mean, France is still coming on strong, moving into the Western Med. So that could be a bit of a problem. Germany is scored at a 3-2 for this turn, 3 for press, 2 for orders, and uh, we've been in active talks about moving against Russia, but Germany thought he might be under attack here, I think, by his erstwhile allies. Now that he's talked Russia into retreating from Denmark, which, I mean, great work on him diplomatically there to make that happen. He moves back from the Baltic into Denmark and regains a little bit of his strength. Um, that, that's good for him. He also talked France into retreating from Belgium. Um, or perhaps France just did that because he saw he needed units there rather than going to Holland because that could have been devastating uh, for Germany. So, I mean, kudos to Germany. Diplomatically, he is controlling his allies and just really getting what he wants here, um, likely through keeping them happy. And uh, kudos to him. So he deserves his position here. Um, I likely won't see help from him now that he secured his alliances a little bit more. Uh, so the North is just trading centers back and forth. But sometimes that causes tension too because someone feels like they're left out or someone feels like they've got a bad position. So, I mean, things can fall apart there. I based my orders that turn on what I knew. So I, I went through a series of assumptions. I assumed that Russia would play all defense and hold Sevastopol. So that told me that Ukraine would be occupied with that. And uh, so Galicia then had the op option to likely either attack Budapest or to support Vienna in an attack. And I knew that Germany was worried about France. I kind of feel like uh, Sherlock here trying to piece together sort of what I know and making these assumptions. And I mean, um, this is probably ridiculous of me to assume that I could make these predictions, but I, I just want to share with you uh, my process for how I came to my tactical decisions. But I knew that Germany was worried about France um, and hedging his bets by potentially joining me. So I assumed that Tyrolia would not help France or attack me. That assumption proved to be true here, so um, that was great. Germany and Russia are hesitant to help each other now, but Germany likely traded Denmark for supporting Galicia into Budapest next turn. So that's sort of what I'm uh, predicting for the next one, because they seem to be trading favors back and forth. and. It may not appear obvious to them, but to their opponents, I mean, we can see what's happening with these trades. So we can, that helps us predict what's going to happen where. So um, one, one way to make yourself predictable. Um, France scoring him at a 3-3. His relationship with Germany appears to be de developing fissures, but he still needs Germany to break Italy. So I picture them staying together, at least France um, really trying hard to stay together with him. Uh, he couldn't land a devastating blow against Germany from the position he's in right now, unless Russia was decisive, which we haven't seen that. I know he's not um, going to be de decisive. Um, France is all in against Italy, but he's up against the stalemate line there. So um, if, uh, if Italy plays things, right then he is in solid shape taking us on to fall 1906 so 1-1 one, one for russia he continues to play very passively sort of a turtling defense a little bit of the vulturism where he's just kind of hanging around the periphery waiting for germany to you know offer up a center or to need his help and he's just kind of um, in reserve there um and he's helping to defend vienna here so germany is offering him uh that center which can that's actually worse for me i'd rather have germany in there because i think germany is more likely to help me in in the future than russia so um that that's a bit of a problem for me 
but uh, I've managed to hold uh, all of my centers there, so that was great. We held Turkey, which means Russia drops by a unit, so um, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, we've got Turkey at a four five. Uh, he's still busy with school. We're keeping orders simple. Sometimes when you're communicating with people, you need to be aware of real life, what's happening for them. And I know he doesn't need a lot of press right now, so we're, I'm, I'm not doing that. We're just keeping it simple. I'd like for him to get Romania so that unit can then support him. Uh, he'll get a unit into Bulgaria. And Russia seems to be trying to win him over as well uh, by offering various uh supports we'll, we'll we'll see what happens with that but i i really need to keep turkey on side and i think turkey needs me to be honest too uh because as soon as russia collapses down there there's only one reason he's keeping that fleet and uh that that fleet in sevastopol is is completely anti-turkey so uh italy's a five five Lots of great strategy talk back and forth here with Ambi. We're looking for ways to defend and to stalemate France. Uh, we knew they'd be hitting Venice, so our defense was pretty straightforward that turn. And uh, I thought Tyrolia would be the support, but it didn't matter that, that Pi wasn't the attacker, so that Piedmont wasn't there. So uh, on to Germany. So I'm scoring him at a 2-1. It was looking like we might have had a chance to do something together, but he, he seems to be re reverting. So he's really determined to work with Russia and to whittle me down. I'm trying to splash some interest into this game now, too, by joining Germany against Russia. But he's really comfortable as the med middleman. Um, it's a little bit frightening how comfortable he is to be so vulnerable there. But um, since he's trying to stay friendly with both Russia and France, he's also telegraphing where his attacks will be coming with predictable deal making. So that uh that i mean that's the only reason i'm still alive i probably should have been dead a long time ago um but i'm just hanging in there through some guesswork and some tactical play uh three three for france not many comms here he's hyper focused on breaking italy he's not a fan of three-way chats but i already mentioned that so uh, my salvo to unite france and germany now it's proven to be completely ineffective uh i made absolutely no headway on that Let's go on to our next turn, winter 1906. So uh, Russia's still at a 1-1, uh, disbanding Sweden there. Um, leaves his north completely wide open. I mean, he's completely vulnerable if Germany decides to move his fleets in, take Norway, take Sweden, um, take St. Petersburg. Uh, but these two have been, you know, working pretty closely together. So there's there's a lot of trust going on there. And, you know, in diplomacy, you can you sometimes have to trust people and other times you don't. So uh, but Russia is just bent and determined. He is going south. I mean, he hasn't made any progress there. He's uh, he's still stuck along the line of spring 1901, Galicia, Ukraine, Sevastopol. Um, but he's still committing one, two, three, four, five units down there. So um, he's he's really also weathering the storm. Um, but they'll just be hacking away against me until I, you know, don't place my support rights. And um, I still have no idea how I'm sitting on three centers in winter 1906 with units all around me since uh, 1902. So, um, but uh, we'll, we'll keep working with it. I'm, I'm keeping Turkey at a four for press and a five for orders. Um, He's got his build. He's still very busy. Status quo is good for him now. Um, but I also get a sense from him that, you know, this is boring him. He he wants some action. And that, that's one of the downsides. And you can use this as a diplomacy player. If some players just get tired of holding and waiting, and especially this game, because it's this game was played over months and months, right? So if you play a game all in one sitting, then sure, you can sit around for five minute turns, 10 minute turns, and it's not a big deal. But when an entire day goes by and you only thing you've done is hold that can be an impetus for uh shifting the game so i'm just a little bit leery of turkey here um i have full faith in in italy so we're still working together italy's at a five five uh we've got lots of fun chatting plans back and forth and um, i don't have any concerns no spidey sense there um germany one one i haven't really had much press from him uh and that's where where he's interesting because uh, I think I, I've heard from others that um, he will shamelessly lie to your face, but he hasn't done that to me in this game. He's been, instead of lying, he just doesn't communicate. And I'm not sure if that's a, a pretense he wants to hold up or uh, what his rationale is for doing that, but he is being honest with me. And, and I know he's apologized a couple of times to me and says, hey, you're a good guy and you know I don't want to take you out, but... Uh, 
um, I, I feel like he, he is trying to not overtly lie to me. And um, so for now, I'm, I'm going to continue assuming that he's going to be telling the truth. Uh, probably unwise of me, but hey, let me know in the comments if uh, if I'm reading this completely wrong. But um, he's digging in now, and he's really comfortable with his position, so I uh, can't do much there. I've got a 2-3 for France. Uh, his build in Marseille, along with the Germany build in Munich, make it really clear that the, they're planning to stick together for some time. All I can do is try to frustrate them. I mean, that Munich play could be defensive against the Burgundy army, uh, but Marseille is just, he's just completely throwing in down there um, to try and break Italy, but uh, kudos to Italy for holding on. Let's advance to spring 1907. Russia is absolutely committed to his current position. As long as Turkey's good, we can still hold him. If Turkey times his attack right, he can break Sev from Romania. I mean, he's com Russia's committing Moscow, Ukraine, and Sev to holding that Sevastopol unit. So um, if he ever, and, and I think for now, it's probably best for us to not attack because we want him to let his guard down. If we continue to attack turn after turn, then he'll continue to support. But he might be more apt to take a risk if we wait and, and guess when he's going to take that risk and then do the attack. So um, that's all we can really do now. So um, I'm scoring uh, Turkey at a 3-5. I'm actually changing here because I'm, I'm just getting a sense from his press. I mean, his tactics look fine. He's supporting where he should. Um, so, so he's still a 5 on, on his orders, but um, he's been so busy in real life. Uh, now he's, he's telling me that he's got more time. And, um, you know, he's, he's kind of hedging about the possibility that uh, he maybe needs to, to do something here. So um, he can take nap. He can take grease and uh, it does worry me that we're, we're sitting targets. I mean, if he takes out Italy and he, he takes out Austria, he might benefit, but likely France benefits, Germany benefits, and Russia benefits. So I think he's um, ill-advised to do that. Um, I do think he'll continue to support Budapest, though, um, because Russia's doing everything in his power to keep his fleet, I mean, to support it that heavily. Um, he's not using that fleet against me, that's for sure. Um, so I'm, I'm going to keep going with that. I could use Serbia to support Budapest if I thought that Turkey was going to be treacherous here, but I really want him on Trieste to make sure that Germany, who at this point I'm not thinking that he's going to attack me, but um, he may just want to pick up an extra dot, so I need to defend against that for now. In terms of Italy, I'm feeling really confident in this alliance. 5-5, five, five. neither of us benefits from stabbing the other. He keeps communicating openly. We're having good chats about what France will do. And I suggested that he'll likely convoy Tuscany over as he did. I thought, you know, it worked for him before and, and it would work again. We can see that. Um, but um, Italy let that happen. So it wasn't the greatest defense there. But um, Italy's being a little bit overrun again. So he may soon start to falter. So this could be a problem if, if he falls. I fall so but it's in my interest to help um suggest to him you know like if i were france this is what i would do so uh we got to score one one for germany this guy's a real threat still I've been trying to break through with him diplomatically every turn. I mean, I've, th I've thrown song quotes at him and um, I, uh, you know, compared myself to um, Travers, the, um, the fellow in, um, oh, what's the, um, oh, you know, I remember the, Oh man, I remember the Alamo. There it is. Um, so the the Alamo. I mean, just just me digging in, trying to survive in the face of um, a huge, outsized army. Um, and uh, I, I know he's from Texas, and hopefully that'll resonate with him. But uh, if Russia and France get together, he is in a world of hurt. He left Denmark open to Russia which seems unwise to me. Um, I would be a little more cautious in his shoes, but um, I'm trying to decide if Russia is more likely to attack Budapest or if Germany is more likely to attack Trieste. I have to choose, but as long as Turkey helps me, um, then I can hold. So I'm going to assume he's with me. 2-2 uh, for France. He's becoming an increasing problem for me. The farther he pushes into Italy, the more vulnerable I become. I've pointed out that Germany can take at least one and likely two centers from France now and break this game wide open. 
So France is fully committed in the south. He's likely to become a big threat to Germany if he can break Italy. But I mean, our plan is to hold and to frustrate and just to make him a, a sitting duck. The more forces he throws south, the more likely Germany and well, at this point, Russia can't do anything against him, but the more likely Germany is. And you can see, I mean, moving into the North Sea suddenly gives him some options in Belgium and London. And uh, I mean, there's there's potentially some opportunities coming up for Germany. Next, we move on to fall 1907. So uh, he scored at a 1-1 still. So the attack finally came. So this, this was a huge stab. This was a big problem for me. Russia turned Turkey. I have no idea how. Um, I don't know why Turkey felt he needed to stab me here because he did not need Russia's help to take Greece. He didn't need Russia's help to take Nap. He, I mean, he could have made some conciliatory offers or um, offered to withdraw from the Black Sea, but instead he actually actively helps Russia against me. So he's decided that if he can get some growth with Russia, uh, maybe the two of them can reunite the juggernaut and stand a chance. But I mean, to me, Russia's been so firmly committed to Germany this whole game and so firmly committed against Turkey that I just can't see it happening because why is he so fervently defending that Sevastopol Navy? I mean, he doesn't want to lose that because he's he wants to use it against Turkey or at least have leverage against Turkey. So um, Romania is now surrounded by Budapest, Galicia, Ukraine, Sevastopol. So, I mean, I'm pointing out to Turkey, there's absolutely no way that Russia doesn't take Romania from you and just collapse. I mean, um, this 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 was a, a big mistake, I think, on his part for me and for him. Um, I think it helps Russia really establish himself. And, uh, you know, if we could have had a little bit more patience, um, you can see that Italy's still doing all right. You know, he's, he's hanging in there. So um, he, he could survive a little bit longer. So... Uh, I have to change now, seeing everything I'm seeing. Turkey is uh, is at a 1-1. Um, he's very honest about it. He says, hey, yep, yeah, you know, I stabbed you. Uh, we've all been waiting for this stab. We didn't know when one of the southern powers might break, but um, he's likely taken away his shot at influencing this game with an ill-timed assist with, with Russia. Um, he just didn't really have a good reason to do this, but um, I know I sound like I'm, I'm doting on it. I'm not. It doesn't bother me that much. I mean, I, I was expecting at some point it could happen. I was hoping that it wouldn't, but um, cautiously optimistic, right? Um, I can understand him not wanting to take three builds for himself and being seen as a new threat, but I mean, if I'm Russia, I'm thinking, hey, if I'm going to join with Turkey, I want him to be strong. So let's get him the build and then the two of us can actually start to push forward. But it, it's just a different way of, of viewing the board. But um, it's clear that Russia is committed to, ter to Germany and he's against uh, Turkey. So a little bit perplexing. Italy's still at a 5-5 five five and... Um, Oh, right. So actually, yeah. So actually, no, sorry. This is the turn. Italy got um, slammed hard. Sorry. Um, yeah. So he, he lost uh, Nap. Uh, he lost two home centers and he lost Greece. So he's just getting crushed. Um, his position in the Western Med popped that fleet there. Uh, France is badly out of position uh, against the German assault though so you can see uh, this this was what I was really hoping for so uh, the unfortunate part of this is if Turkey had held on one more turn this is what we've been playing for was this turn for Germany to take uh, Belgium Germany to take London uh, make Munich to make an attempt on Burgundy I mean this was this is it this is the moment Germany said enough's enough I'm taking Belgium back so um, it's too bad that it that we couldn't have held on one more turn, but hey, we move forward. And so the question is now, do I want to work with Turkey if he um, gets crushed by Russia again? And I guess we'll have to wait first and see if Russia does take that center. But from what I've seen, uh, Vi will take the sure thing every time. So, um, so yeah, poor Italy is in dire straits now. Um, not for lack of trying, though. Germany is at a 2-1. Two, two um, I'm surprised he... W I'm a little bit surprised he went for the big stab on France at this point. Uh, I thought it would happen maybe a few turns later, but it's what we needed to shift the tide. So, unfortunately, he's still fully committed to seeing me fall by tapping Trieste. And, uh, I mean, he didn't have to do that, but um, he's, he's really trying to... Um, 
I mean, maybe it's more to, to make sure that Italy falls. But uh, so he actually gets so France supports Germany into Venice while simultaneously getting stabbed. So that's got to be painful for Ezio. Ezio, I feel for you out there. Um, he is not going to be a happy man after this, and that's good for us. So, um, so Germany is not prepared to move against the Russian at all. And this is likely wise of him because you, you don't want to be fighting both Russia and France at the same time. Uh, but if Russia makes his move, then um, Germany could also find himself in trouble. So uh, I, Russia could start spamming fleets into St. Petersburg in the north anytime to consolidate his holdings and to gain some power over Germany. And uh, it would take a lot of restraint to not do that. France is scored at a 2-2. The worst part of this stab is that, you know, he was he was still fully committed to Germany and Germany wasn't committed to him. So he got shanked hard there. Probably the biggest stab of the game. Moving along to winter of 1907. Russia's clearly at a 1-1. We get another army in Warsaw. And that's paired with uh, a fleet in St. Uh, Petersburg. So finally, it's good to have that down in the north coast. So he's saying, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go around the top rather than come down into a position that threatens you. Uh, likely, he'll move straight into Norway or somewhere like that to protect those holdings. So um, pretty sneaky here, though, to disband the army up in, uh, I believe it was in Sweden, and then to replace it with another fleet. Germany should take note because... Two fleets up there for Russia is way more powerful than one fleet and one army. So um, that that could be the beginning of the, the signal that the, the shift is coming. So Turkey uh, says he's fully committed with Russia now. He's not concerned about Romania falling. Um, I'm scoring him at a 1-1. Um, so I'm completely surrounded now by a hostile Germany, a hostile Russia, hostile Turkey, and an almost dead Italy. And what are we at? Winter 1907. Really, like, what chance do I have to live? But the mantra that I live by is never give up because you never know what can happen in a game. I'm going to keep those two units fighting as long and as hard as I can. And uh, we'll see how we can do. But uh, I may not be long for this world unless I can convince Turkey of Russia's plan, which absolutely involves Southern conquest. I mean, I've suggested the upcoming turn is the one where um, if I were him, this is the turn where I would take Romania and hit Sevastopol with support from Black and Arm. I would rejoin me, uh, support me into Budapest. And, uh, you know, then he could patch up that relationship. Uh, he could take out that fleet in Russia and, act and probably catch Russia by surprise. So even though he stabbed me, he still has a really good opportunity here to take advantage of that. Um, but if he's ever going to pop the fleet, I think this would be the turn to do it. Um, he won't get many opportunities with Russia's really cautious play style. But um, this is all a prediction. We'll see how that turns out. 5-5 five, five, uh, for Italy. He's just clinging to life. Same as me. Poor guy. Down to two units. But uh, at least he's fighting for survival. Just like me. I really love Ambi's attitude in this game. It's really what a diplomacy player me, um, needs. You just you roll with where you're at, right? You do the best you can with the units you have. And that's part of this game. You can't get all sucky and whiny that you're, you're getting crushed. So um, he just rolls with whatever comes along. And I think we could all learn something from him so germany uh is at a 2-1 a little bit of press there uh we're messaging again but he's not willing to support me to budapest so i'm really making the pitch now that um he's got enough strength that he can hold in the middle um if he allows italy to work with him they could probably finish off france and uh he really has to make sure that russia doesn't grow here russia is going to solo and um completely take this board from him so um i'm hoping to convince him either for me to support him into budapest or for him to support me and either way um the result of that is to break up the alliance between russia and germany it doesn't matter which which way that happens in because later i could then try to take budapest back um so I hope he wants to slow down the Russian war machine, but he doesn't seem ready to move on Russia yet. Again, maybe I don't blame him. France maybe isn't quite far enough into the coffin yet. So um, I've just got to hang on until he changes his mind here, I think. So we've got France is at a 4-2. His press is actually much more positive now. Um, he's, he's keeping the Western Mediterranean fleet there. Uh, which is really interesting instead of uh, Lyon. And uh, that suggests to me that he wants to make a stab on Tunis, potentially. Um, 
otherwise it would make more sense to be in Lyon so um, I'm not liking Italy's chances here um, Lyon seems like a much more versatile space to be in so that's telegraphing a little bit about what he's thinking maybe he, he wants to support the um, mid-Atlantic Ocean but there isn't a threat against that right now and he could have done that with Spain as well so um, that that move there is a little bit perplexing to me uh, well maybe not perplexing I think it just kind of telegraphs that he wants that unit in position so he can try to bargain with Germany to get Germany back on side. Who knows, I'll have to watch um, Ezio's commentary to see if any of these predictions are remotely close. Okay, spring 1908. So not a lot of surprises there. He's at a 1-1 still. Uh, Russia took the easy center. Of course he takes Romania. It's, it's a guaranteed take. Um, not sure how we talked Turkey into withdrawing from Armenia, though. Um, this Turkey's just, you know, <laughs> rolling over and saying, here's my soft underbelly, good luck. Um, and that gives Turkey absolutely no leverage anymore. So I'm starting to think Russia's, um, Russia's play as, as the vulture play is really actually quite a effective uh, because he's not making a lot of enemies he just kind of hangs out and waits for people to attack and I know maybe it sounds like I'm describing it in a negative way by calling it vulture play but um, it actually it's, it's really working for him and early in the game it felt like everybody was just giving him centers but maybe he's just doing the right thing saying the right things in diplomacy and maybe Russia deserves to take this game because Germany's leaving himself exposed uh, France uh, wasn't willing to join Germany when, when he really ought to have to um, ensure that he stayed alive and uh, so Russia Russia might walk away with this game but um, so uh, he, he, he kind of lies in wait, right, until the carrion is ready for him. Then he swoops in and, and gets the easy pickings, Romania being the case here. So tactically, not a bad strategy. Um, as an opponent, though, it's incredibly frustrating to watch. You know, why why do people just give centers to him and allow these opportunities? But um, I'm expecting them to consolidate his position he'll play some defense he'll lock things down he's got all the units in the world to do it with we're not going to break into there so um, this game has suddenly gone from me potentially having the chance to keep some home centers and and survive to um, just trying to cling on maybe a unit or two and just try to get part of a draw that's really all I can hope for at this point that would be my best outcome I think uh, not really much else in in the game here um, I mean, it's fun to still play and to see it happening, but let's move to Turkey. I'm scoring him at a 2-3, so he's back at the table. He's discussing if we can work together again. Um, I don't have a lot of options, and it still makes sense for uh, us to do this, so I'm theoretically in. The other place I'm at is that I'm completely out of this game if Turkey stays with Russia, so I kind of need him to be with me. But on the other hand, I don't want him to be too strong because um, that gives Russia more incentive to keep him around and to keep working with him, right? So um, potentially we may, may need to come up with a plan that um, rebalances or redistributes the wealth a little bit here in the south. So, um, and we're at a 5-5 with Italy and Ambi. So France proposed a plan here that was completely, um, or is this coming in the next turn? I'm forgetting which turn this was, but um, I think this was the turn where France basically uh, proposed a plan that would benefit him uh, quite a bit, and it would harm all of us. So it was t losing Tunis, um, I, I was going to lose Trieste, and Italy was going to lose Venice, and, and none of it made any sense for any of us, um, unless we were French. Um, and so do we really want France to stay alive here? No, we don't. Because if Germany can finish France fast, then we've got a race to the finish between Russia and Germany. They start to battle it out, and whoever's losing the fight will need the southern powers who are still alive to help them, and that's where we could potentially stay in a draw. So um, we actually want to see France crumble here, and we want Germany and France to stay at odds, because if they make up, then it chugs on for a long time. So um, I propose the Hose France plan here. Ambi loved it. Um, Ambi will grow if he can get Germany to follow through and support him into um, Venice because right now France is, is sitting, sitting happily in Venice waiting to get that build, but I'd much rather see that go to Italy and, and Germany may be willing to make that happen. 
Germany, he's at a 1-1. He's still slowly taking me out. This guy is unrelenting, you know. Um, I've tried proposing different plans. Nothing's working. I mean, he's, he's pleasant pleasant to deal with. Great guy. Um, but he's just sort of gently saying, sorry, can't do anything for you, um, which is how this game works too, right? He's slowly taking me out. He claims to feel some remorse over doing it. Uh, but like a bad horror movie, he just keeps lumbering forward. Uh, France, he's uh, scoring press at a five and orders at two. And uh, so, yeah, I think I think letting him fall is probably our best option here. Um, if Germany can help Italy into Venice, we're good. Uh, Paris will fall. That that should happen. And uh, France, I mean, he's he's kind of made his bed here, right? He hasn't helped. He's been working against Italy the whole game, and suddenly is wanting Italy to help him. But there's uh, partly through the mid and late game, it's the relationships you develop at the table that are going to be really important. This is a little bit like Survivor, where um, people who have cultivated relationships throughout the whole game will be more likely to get help now. And so, you know, Turkey and I have cultivated a relationship together, and I think um, we can probably work productively together again even though he stabbed me whatever he made made a mistake and um we'll, we'll do the best we can right um so germany and russia really need to turn on each other germany dodged a huge bullet with liverpool not taking edinburgh from him um that that change in a guess there would have altered france's fates somewhat uh because then he would not have been able to dislodge him and germany would have lost that center and france would have held on a little bit longer so that was a critical mistake on france's part we are moving into fall of 1908 and as you can see i am just barely clinging to life so russia uh scoring him at a 1-1 is playing it safe with romania he's putting all his support down there he does not want to lose that uh, he's also trying to free his fleet from sevastopol um likely hoping that he can uh, eventually get a build there and, and get those fleets free uh, but his slow and steady approach is really working well for him here moving on to turkey press is at a three orders at a five turkey's followed through on the plan he's blocking france and tunis he's gotten an army back where it can be of use uh, into armenia there um he welcomed me into greece so i could keep that unit alive so that was a nice gesture on his part uh he took a hit and uh you know I've been taking a lot of hits for my allies, so it was nice that he uh, returned the favor. It's a matter of uh, just battening down the hatches now for both of us and just trying to hang around for part of the draw. So it should be fun to uh, to see it battled out here. But uh, Italy's a 5-5, five -five, and uh, unlike the previous turn, this was a much better turn for Italy. The only problem uh, was that he was supposed to use Apulia to support Rome to Venice rather than taking Nap back. Um, I guess there was a misunderstanding there. Um, um, but it worked out well for him, so um, he's in pretty good shape. Uh, it's likely better for Italy and, and, and I, though, if Turkey isn't a massive powerhouse. So um, that way Russia could use Turkey against us with the promise of keeping him in the draw. And so this way, at least, uh, Turkey shares our fate rather than um, listening to uh, what Russia might have in store for him. Germany's still at a 1-1. I mean, he's he's a huge threat to me here. And he's pressing his advantage against France. He's also having luck. We're helping him. I mean, we're we're not helping France at all. And uh, so that's, that's where France is at right now. But he may not fall fast enough, though, because Russia and Germany still seem very coordinated. Uh, I love how brazen his move is from Tyrolia to Piedmont, though. So he's really pressing his advantage there. Let's move on to France now. So he's a score of 2-4. Uh, his orders are actually fairly helpful here to us. He's just uh, starting to retreat. But, I mean, he's still going for Tunis. He's still going after Italy when, I mean, at this point, Germany is the massive threat. So um, it, it seems like he could be using his units better, and uh, he's not bringing Italy on side, which he really needs to do at this point. But uh, he said what he was going to do in his pro-France plan, uh, so that's something, but it was evident that all of his suggestions were designed for his own survival. So, for instance, um, for me, he was suggesting that I move Albania to Trieste, uh, which was a completely useless move, but Venice needed to hold there or, or to stay 
stay there. He was likely counting on Italy to support him. Um, but uh, so supporting me to Trieste, I mean, was great to help destabilize Germany and to have me tap uh, Trieste there uh, to prevent him from getting into Venice. But um, again, it, it didn't do anything for me other, other than it would have lost me a unit. So instead of two units, I would be sitting on one unit now. So uh, I wasn't going to go for that. Um, and it was a completely useless gesture from that unit that had nothing else to do. So Venice will likely retreat to Tyrolia. Uh, that adds a small but manageable complication for Germany, but hopefully France has gotten the message that he's not welcome in the Mediterranean, and hopefully we can get him out of there so that uh, we can get back to the business of stopping Germany and Russia from winning this game. But um, we can't do so on, on, on someone's terms that sacrifice all of us for, for their exclusive goods. So uh, I survive with two units for another season. And frankly, I have no idea how I'm still alive in this game. I really should have been taken out long ago. But um, I mean, hopefully we can stop one of these uh, major powers from forming up the stalemate line. But I mean, the impetus for doing that is on the larger powers because they're the ones who need to to bring the call to arms and and start to coordinate the plans and neither of them are ready to do that yet because they both believe they can win this game so um we need to just hold strong at this point let's move forward now to winter 1908 so russia is a 1-1 he continues to be germany's wingman he's built yet another army in warsaw he loves his warsaw builds and he shows no signs of turning on germany he's gaining dominance in the north and germany is increasingly leaving his flank open to him so this is risky business here if russia had a little bit more gumption he could likely solo this board quite easily um i'm not sure i see that happening though he's been been fairly passive throughout so um, I think he's distracted with um, with Nexus um, in the real world. I'm not sure if that's uh, still going on at this point or not, but um, his, his heart doesn't seem completely in the game. Um, so you have to manage that when you're dealing with your diplomacy and when you're, you're working your tactics, bearing that in mind, because it does influence how, how a player plays. Uh, so for Turkey, we've got a 4-5, so he's working his way back towards the... Uh, the precious 5-5, five, five, but I still don't completely trust him. But I mean, um, I was fairly happy with him disbanding the Aegean and Constantinople. He can still hold Russia um, with some good play there. And that keeps one fleet up on, on the front line there. So he can pop into the Adriatic and maybe we can look at taking Trieste or he can support Italy. Um, I mean, there's lots of options here, but uh, likely he'll uh, try to defend Tunis or uh, possibly move into um, Tis. So um, I, I, I think that can be very useful though, but uh, he appears to be uh, committed to holding for a draw at this point. So Italy is sitting at a 5-5 five, five, and um, losing, losing Venice um, the previous turn was completely inevitable. Um, but uh, he's gained it back now because he managed to get Germany on side and uh, that, was, that was quite good for him. So um, we're actually holding strong. It'll be hard for Germany to make much headway into Southern Italy. Uh, so that will sort of force Germany to continue his assault on France here. And while we could use France against Germany and Russia, I mean, Germany and Russia are gonna stay together as long as France is in this game. So he's, he's still more of a liability to um, the Southern Commonwealth here. Germany is scoring at a one, two. He's giving me assurances that Serbia is safe. He does not want to help Russia win this game. Um, I do actually trust this because it would be completely foolish for him to give Serbia to Russia. Uh, that would be game over, in my opinion. So this is where I might actually be useful to him if we can start to um, put some attacks down on Budapest. Don't know if Germany's there yet. I don't think he is. But uh, yeah, because if I fall, then Turkey would fall. Russia would benefit from all of that and uh, there's nothing Germany could do to stop them then so that would be an embarrassing and humiliating loss for all of us so um, but who knows what will happen so we score France at a 2-3 here 
there's really not much France can do. Um, I mean, he's just so adamant to keep that um, TIS fleet there as bargaining against. I mean, that's the only reason it would be there is to try to get Germany on side and say, hey, I'll use this to help you break Italy. But um, that unit is really, I mean, he can try to snipe Tunis. But the unit is out of position for defending France. So uh, France is scattered to the winds. Uh, he's going to lose England. He's disbanded that unit. I mean, he could have caused some disruptions and some problems for Germany and maybe gotten Italy on side. But instead, he's continuing to threaten um, an ever-growing Italy who's united with Turkey. So um, not, not really anything that's going to help France's survival there. Uh, Germany's course is set. Uh, he's just, you can tell he is a dog on a bone here, and that bone is France. He wants blood, so he's going to just keep pushing, even at the expense of his own safety. Um, so it, it may be a long and tedious struggle if uh, Russia starts to go for the solo and maybe even gets France on board at this point, in which case Germany would likely appeal to myself, Turkey, and Italy to try and help him. And so um, there's lots of possible reconfigurations that can happen here. But this is what we needed to try to get to a draw sooner than later. We are now moving into our next year of play. This is spring of 1909. So Russia is a 1-1. Galicia moving into Bohemia. That was likely at the German request to prevent the French from retreating there. But it's really setting up Russia now nicely to stab Germany with Munich now vacant. So Germany's starting to invite Russia in. So this, this could be a bit of a problem. So I may actually have something to work with here, though, because if I can get Russia, sorry, Germany, um, worried about Russia's growth and progress and the threat he poses, then Germany may yet turn and, uh, and finally face the Russians. So um, that, that could be good. Pushing into the English Channel um, with Russia there, that, that surprises me a bit because now Russia is within stabbing distance of, I mean, he's at nine centers now, but if you look at where his units are, he's already infiltrated well into the English Channel. Denmark is now controlling the North Sea, which is sitting on one, two, three, four, five, six dots, which is the most powerful um, base in the game, um, assuming that you, you count being on five centers. Did I say five or six? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six centers. So uh, Russia is in the driver's seat and Germany can do nothing about it at this point. So he must be getting the jitters here. Russia is relentlessly pressuring the south still with all he's got. And uh, Russia supported me from Serbia to uh, Bulgaria there. That was without asking, uh, which can sometimes be a great strategy uh, because it actually, the, the Turk fell for it. Um, Oliver Lug um, asked me about that and was a little surprised surprise like oh you got Russia to uh, try to support Ser Serbia to Bulgaria so um, I needed to clarify that because uh, that wasn't in fact what I did um, but you can see that I used the exact same play that turn with Serbia I supported Trieste I mean there's nothing else that unit could really usefully do there because uh, Turkey did not want to attack Romania at that point um, he was looking to get Armenia, sec Armenia secure. Uh, so I thought, you know what, let's do a misdirect and I'll support Germany and maybe Russia will start to think that uh, the tides are turning or who knows what. But um, we, we used the same strategy there and it was a good strategy to try and cast doubt. Uh, so that that's pretty fun to see that. But um, we are going into Turkey. So he secured Armenia, which is great. That prevents Russia from building a second fleet in Sevastopol. Um, he's been good to his word so he cannot get into the black sea unless turkey lets him um he could rearrange his units and get into romania so that should be the next angle that we need to look at moving along so i'm actually scoring turkey at a 5-5 now Italy, still at a 5-5. Five, five. Man, this guy's a good ally. And, and, and sometimes it's great when you just can count on somebody and, and you know you're working together and, you know, we're, we're, we, we haven't been harming each other at least for a very, very long time. So uh, losing um, Venice uh, there, did he? No, he didn't lose Venice. So, um, yeah, it looks like um, Italy is forcing his way into uh, Tis, and then in the consequent turn, he can take Tunis. So either he can take it or he can give it to Turkey, either way. Probably, 
Uh, could go either way. So, uh, and then of course you've got France pulling his unit back to Piedmont. He is starting to retreat there. So, but he's not in great shape with that concerted Russian German offensive, which is a little bit strange to say, but um, against France. But, anyways, one one um, is my score for Germany. Again, I'm, I'm, he must think I'm very pathetic here. I'm, I'm pleading with him uh, everything I think of to get him to secure his position against Russia, Russia but he's such a trusting sort, and he just keeps opening wide. So um, it's a little painful to watch how vulnerable he is because we've got Holland, Edinburgh, London, Munich. They're all in striking distance for Russia, and since the draw is what I need to go for, I may need to try to get Germany panicked about his position and maybe even start thinking about forming a stalemate line here um, and and also to see if, if I can convince him um, that this is the best he can do at 10 units uh, Russia is going to likely grow here um, Germany may may panic and, and try to go for a draw um, which as I say that that's the best I can hope for it's a little ridiculous to hope for a draw with uh, six six nations still alive but uh, you never know stranger things have happened France, I'm scoring him at a 2-3. Uh, completely non-communicative. I don't blame him. I mean, we hosed him completely. So, uh, But that's that's a DEFCON 2 for press when you don't talk. And uh, he went from the top of the heap to possibly being the second one out in this game, which is shocking and surprising. Um, I don't know how I've, I'm, I'm outlasting him here. but um, So I could see him actually being in favor of a draw too because uh, his trajectory is strong downward uh, still he's he's got that wasted unit and will try and fail to take Tunis it just um, it's you know he, he really needs to be defending against Germany here and trying to befriend Italy not uh, antagonize him but um, nothing we can do to change that other than to show him by force that it won't work Moving on to fall 1909, so Russia, 1-1 one, one, of course. The coordination with Germany continues. That is so lucky for Germany because, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's moving Bohemia into Vienna. They're slowly and steadily taking out France. They're holding the line against Turkey and I, and I was concerned that Russia might try to move Sev to Rum that turn uh, to get a build, so I encouraged Turkey to make a full court press on Romania and see if we could take it but uh, with the tap on Sev, but we just didn't quite uh, manage that. Uh, so great defensive play there by Russia. Uh, Germany has gifted Vienna to Russia, which solidifies his position and possibly the alliance even more. Uh, Germany's getting spread super thin and his armies are far from home. And as ever, you need to be very careful. I mean, if you're if you're doing this idea of like, let's, let's stay balanced and I'll give you units, um, that's great. And it works really well up until about 11 or 12 units. And then suddenly if you're out of position, that that's when they start saying, you know what, I'm just going to take a couple extra. And when you get in the disband cycle with, with a huge force looming and your unit's completely out of position, there's nothing you can do. You're always one turn too late to fall back and you look back with regret and say, man, why didn't I cover there? So um, it would be advisable for Germany to at least have one unit in one of his home centers, uh, Munich, Berlin, like any anywhere there because he's just, just so wide open. 5-5 um, five, five is the score for Turkey. He's completely on board with the plan to hit Romania. It was generous of him to give Italy Tunis rather than getting in there himself. So um, this guy is with us. Italy, 5-5. Five, five. We're holding strong. Hard for Germany to make much headway down into the south there because, um, yes, he loses Venice. But uh, he falls back to Apulia and holds Tunis. So, I mean, on balance, he's going to keep his three units and that works well. Uh, puts more pressure on France. Germany is scoring him at a 1-2. Um, again, he's telling me Serbia is safe. So um, let's hope that that is true. We've got a 2-3 score for France. Um, yeah, he's, he's in trouble here. So um, he attempted to hold Brest and... Uh, was beaten by a three unit press there. He lost the English Channel. He lost Liverpool. He's got a fleet up in the North Atlantic. Uh, it's just a matter of time here because uh, he's also got Italy angry and with units free now to start to move on him. So uh, that could potentially um, end his game very soon. Winter 1909. 
Okay, so let's take a look at what the builds are here. Surprise, <laughs> another build, army build in Warsaw for Russia. He really wants to signal to Germany that he's in this for the long haul. Um, he could have plopped another fleet down south coast of St. Petersburg, and that would be a really, really strong fleet there. So he's just saying, you know what, I'm good. Let's just, let's just move slow and steady here. So uh, this man has patience. Uh, Turkey, 5-5, five, five, nothing to say here. We're just holding strong. Italy, uh, parity's achieved but um, Italy's got a better and more defensible position now, um, having the southern tip of, of Italy there. So it's a, a little harder for Germany to break in there, especially when he doesn't have any fleets. So uh, Italy's looking pretty strong. I mean, strong as far as you can be with three units. Um, I think this might be my last chance to turn Germany. Uh, so this, this he, I'm scoring him at a 1-2 and uh, just check my notes here. So um, this is what I write to Germany. I can see very clearly where Russia's getting his 18 centers. I don't see where you're thinking you'll pick yours up. And, and just as a side note here, take a look for yourself. If you were Germany, where do you get your centers from? Where do you get your 18? Uh, because it is a really sticky, muddy battle and you're not taking them off Russia in the north. You're not taking them off Russia really anywhere else. It's a tough slog against France. Now Russia's in there. I mean, that that's that's tough. But look at Russia and count up where his 18 dots come from. You know, we're holding strong in the south. He's only got the one fleet down there. So it comes from Germany. Germany is his target, right? Anyways, back to my press to him. You're not in, in a position, Germany, to take any from Russia, even if you wanted to. And he's only getting stronger and more well positioned. So if you aren't going for the solo, where are you setting up the stalemate line? It seems that Russia is already, oh, I've lost my place here, uh, already over the only place you could effectively block him. It very much appears that you're setting yourself up for a second place here. But if it's a solo, second is also last because as you know if one person gets to 18 everybody else loses the game and that's the strange thing with uh with these scoring systems that if i share in a draw technically um the centers don't matter and and i don't necessarily agree with that i think centers absolutely do matter matter but not everybody agrees with me so um but uh that's all right we'll, we'll roll with it so um in the early game russia very much didn't deserve to win this but perhaps now he does he's really setting you up for a huge stab and he replies to me I can't disagree with a word you've written. So he's he's listening, and uh, we'll see what what's going to come of it. But um, France, I'm scoring him at a two three. He's been reduced to the bare minimum of units. He's going to lose Marseille, that's inevitable. But if Italy gets into the fray in the Western Med, then he'll be down to one unit very soon. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I like my odds of survival better than France's at this point. Uh, with Germany and Russia bo both at 11, we need to start establishing the stalemate line soon. We've got to prevent the solo. And uh, this is entirely in Germany's hands, though. Uh, I really am just a, a bit player left in this game. All right, here I am in spring 1910 still, just uh, happy to be alive. <laughs> Russia's in a 1-1. One, one. I'm surprised that, um, and, and this is where, where Germany actually said, hey, you know, we need a draw. Um, let's, let's do it up. And uh, everybody agreed, except um, it was interesting. I mean, I readily agreed because the game was getting a bit slow from my perspective and as a content creator I'm, I'm conscious too that I would either rather die ignominiously or uh, you know make a miraculous comeback because sitting here just really trying to survive isn't that exciting for you uh, paying attention to my perspective of this but uh, so for that reason I thought you know what this this is great I'll take a draw that's the best outcome I can get um, but of course another part of me was thinking this is where the game is really good and I almost just want to die a slow death just to see this battle happen but it was Oliver Lug in Turkey who articulated this and said hey you know what 
like maybe we should battle it out and he didn't want to stand in the way if everybody else wanted to draw um but uh but he was the one who was actively saying like hey yeah no this this game's just heating up it's just getting good let's let's fire it up uh ambi of course is down to three units so he he'd be happy to take a draw france he's just about out of the game he'll take the draw poor poor florida man i i gotta say that this is a, a terrible result for him i mean the game is over now everybody did agree to draw uh germany i mean i can see the panic uh starting to set in because he looks at his position and sees that russia can just completely eviscerate him uh so the the one that, that i'm questioning most here is russia because um for russia to agree to a draw here suggests that he's um you know a little tentative about trying to fit in i mean that 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 fits with his style of play so far that he's been fairly reluctant to um, get into a major offensive. Um, he likes to play a supporting role, and I don't know if this is his style in other games or not, or just the ones I've played with him, but um, but I think he's also thinking about Nexus, and um, you know, if, if everybody's happy at the table, then then he seemed happy to agree to a draw, but I'm, I'm very surprised that <laughs> we have six players all agreeing to a draw here, so I've never actually had that in my entire time playing Diplomacy. I've never seen a six-way draw had a six-way draw um if i were in germany's shoes i'd be fighting this sucker out if i were in russia's shoes i'd be fighting it out uh even in france's position i'd be uh cutting my losses i'd be locking things down and uh working trying to work with italy and austria to try to um get back in the game and you know maybe even crush germany get a little sweet revenge on germany there with some help from russia um but i mean the threat of the the solo is fairly strong so um anyways i think there there still could have been lots of play left in this game but um this is where we agreed um to draw the line so um so it was was interesting so turkey's at a 5-5 five, five. Uh, italy's still at a 5-5 five, five. we made it for the entire game and we stayed loyal so we really needed to for our survival but I'm glad to see Ambi alive in Media Wars 1. He didn't do quite as well, and, uh, you know, he was out of the game fairly quickly, so I'm really happy to see him still in here. Uh, I was looking a little dicey for quite some time there. And... Uh Germany he's scored at a 1-2 here uh, his nerves got the better of him he gets a board top here uh, tied with Russia I believe yeah so they both end with 11 and he had nowhere to go but down uh, he's very generous with giving away his centers but the only problem with this is is the tipping point where you can't stop the person who you've given dots to from taking more without asking so uh, Francis this really isn't the result that Ezio was looking for but um, I'll be really curious to watch his uh, deconstruction of the game uh, but taking the draw saves him from the humiliation of getting completely wiped out by Germany and I'm sure Germany would would be thinking hey maybe I just want to stick around to wipe him out so it seems like there might be something a little bit personal there but uh, he was scored at a 2-3 so England is uh, really the only one who's not going to like this outcome uh, no one wants to see that i wonder too if uh if there's ever been a seven way draw that that would be completely ludicrous but uh you have to remember that this game is based around um how the players come together to stop the people who are leading the charge so um i'm i'm a little bit with uh eddie Burson who says that the solo isn't actually the best outcome in the game because that means that you force the win on everybody else and uh, if you can get everybody at the table to acknowledge that you are the best player uh, when you have the most centers then to him that's that's the best win because uh, you know you didn't you didn't force it on everybody so um, thanks so much. This this is definitely the longest and uh, most detailed analysis that I've ever given for a game. If you've hung around this time, then, uh, well, thank you so much for listening, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you enjoy this kind of analysis of diplomacy, or if you like the threat assessment tool, please consider stabbing the like button and subscribing. Uh, this, been, this video has been quite a few months in the making, so we really appreciate your support. And if you want to see Legendary Tactics join a future Media Wars game, I'm going to need to to see at least 100 likes on this video add your own thoughts on the game below and we'll stab you later hopefully actually check out the comments because usually the other countries come in and add their own thoughts on the game and um, what's really fortunate about the media wars is that we have all content creators offering their different perspectives so please check out all the other content creators and their channels uh, we'll we'll cross reference and, and we'll see how much uh, I completely uh, misunderstood or misread or uh, maybe some 
sometimes I got things right too. And uh, I, I'm, you know what? I'm just really happy that I survived till the end of the game. I'm on two units. I lost my home centers, but I had a lot of fun. And really, ultimately, that's what this game is about: is just having a great time. So hopefully, you're enjoying diplomacy, and we will stab you later. Thanks so much for watching.